For this series, I consulted with Professor Louis Darnell for help making my glass entirely from scratch. Louis is such a great source of information on this topic, though, that I wanted to do a more in-depth video with him and let him explain his book, as well as the importance glass has had in the development of our society. Hello, my name's Louis Darnell. I am a professor at the University of Westminster, and I'm also the author of this, a book called The Knowledge, How to Rebuild Civilization in the Aftermath of a Cataclysm. The book is a thought experiment. Let's imagine, just for the sake of argument, that everything we're familiar with in the world around us today were to disappear tomorrow. There was some kind of global catastrophe, a doomsday event, an apocalypse, and the vast majority of humanity dies and civilization collapses. But we've survived. What now? What would you need to know? Not just to keep yourself alive in the immediate aftermath, but to thrive in the long term. How would you go about rebuilding everything from scratch and rebooting civilization itself? in the way you would reboot a computer after it's crashed. What one book would you want handed to you as a survivor of the apocalypse to restart history? Well, as a scientist, that's the book that I've tried to write. The trick behind the knowledge is that, of course, this book hasn't actually got anything to do with post-apocalyptic survival. I am a scientist and I wanted to use this notion of the end of the world and the loss of everything we just take for granted in our everyday lives as a way of peering under the hood, seeing how our modern world works behind the scenes. Where does everything come from? How are things made? How could you go right back to scratch if you ever needed to? Which is exactly the same idea that Andy's been working on with how to make everything. One of the topics I talk about in the knowledge is glass. Now, glass was one of the first synthetic substances that humanity made. Something we had to create from scratch by mixing together different ingredients. Rather than, for example, baking river mud, baking clay to make ceramics and bricks. Glass is something we created from scratch ourselves. Now, this was first done in ancient Mesopotamia and around the third millennium BC. But more recently in our history, glass has been absolutely critical to how we have built the modern world. And in particular, glass was fundamental to the scientific revolution. It's how we came to understand the natural world around us, understand the laws the universe behaves by, and then exploit that understanding and that knowledge and the technologies we build to help us through our everyday lives. And the reason for that is that glass has a unique combination of properties. There is nothing else that you can make that has that same combination of attributes. Glass is relatively strong, it's chemically unreactive, and also it's perfectly transparent. Glass changes its viscosity, it changes its thickness over a range of temperatures. And this means that you can blow glass. You can inflate it into bulbs and test tubes out of glass, where we pocket away little bubbles of the world, where we can control and do an experiment. We can watch how a chemical reaction proceeds and understand what's going on in there. We need glass to make thin tubes for thermometers and barometers, the tools that we use to measure and understand temperature and pressure. And that then led on the invention of the steam engine and the internal combustion engine, all these machinery that we use today. But even more importantly, you can take glass and mold it into a particular shape, into a lens to manipulate light itself. You can focus light to make a microscope or make a telescope. We can see things which are so invisibly small that our own eyes can't see. And we can understand about bacteria and germs and why people get sick. And this is the glass that I made myself and helped Andy to make his glass afterwards. And you can see that I've got a bit of seeding in here. There are some tiny bubbles in the glass that I've made, this tiny round window pane of glass. But this dimple right in the middle here, this is where the glass blower's pipe would have been broken off after forming that flat disc. Now in history, the lens was first used for making spectacles, for making eyeglasses in the second half of the 13th century. And it was in the early 1600s when people first started turning these telescopes towards the heavens and understanding our place in the cosmos. 
Galileo saw the moons orbiting Jupiter. He saw spots on the sun and he explored the features and craters on the surface of the moon. So Andy, I reckon the next project, the next challenge that you should take on is to take your glass, take your lenses and try to make a telescope from scratch. See if you can see the moons orbiting Jupiter as Galileo did over four centuries ago. I want to give a huge shout out to Bolin Studios who once again volunteered to do the awesome animations for this video. Be sure to check out their website and some of their other work at studiobolin.com. And of course, thank you again to Louis Darnell. He's been an amazing help with this project. And definitely check out his book. I highly recommend it. You can find a link to it in the description. If you prefer to listen to it as an audiobook, it's also available on audible.com. If you haven't used them before, they provide thousands of audiobooks with just a monthly subscription. With them, we're able to provide you a free 30-day trial, so check that out. The link is also in the description. I'll be checking back in with Lewis in the near future once I complete both a microscope and telescope that I'm busy making right now. So be sure to watch for that in the coming weeks.